in all humility, I, I pray you'll help me to see clearly and listen humbly and to speak truthfully. May we continue the seva of reading Bhagavad Gita at the request of Gurudev, but let us also say today that it's a continuation of the birthday celebration from, from before. I could not be with you, of course, but this is my birthday gift to Gurudev. Wow! Yeah. 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 So I hope that, um, that the love I feel, the love in my heart will pass along, will be transmitted to you, and you will pass it along to others, and above all to our dear uh, Gurudev. It's by the beauty of the text, it's by the poetry of the, of the Bhagavad Gita, that the, the, that the divinity of it comes out by feeling Bhagavad Gita, that we find the truth of Bhagavad Gita. It's not by just understanding the words, it's by understanding the feelings that it produces. And this is through the beautiful poetry of the, of the book. The point of the starting point we have for the reading is, of course, to try to understand how. Bhagavad Gita brings us to bhakti, how in a way it's the first bhakti before bhakti. Before uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's the bhakti that shows the way towards the coming of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And to do this, we look for, we, we look for an understanding of uh, Radha, Radharani, in the text, we look for understanding of the energy of divine love in the text. And as you know, so far we have found a lot of it, thanks to Gurudev's inspiration. The last time, last week we read two verses, with lots of good help from you and uh, Jainanda Maharaj and, and Gurudev. Verse uh, 13, talked about what uh, a Mahatma is, what a great soul is, and more importantly, what a great soul understands, what kind of understanding characterizes a great soul. And understanding, um, Prabhupada said, means understanding the three parts, Sat, Chit and Ananda, eternity, knowledge, and bliss. If we understand these qualities of Krishna, then we understand Krishna. And that is precisely what a Mahatma can do. A Mahatma, Prabhupada explained, and we explained, is someone who doesn't have a rational understanding, a logical understanding, but has a spiritual understanding. And to have a spiritual understanding, an understanding through feeling, through love, requires bhakti, requires the practice of bhakti. To find that understanding, we need to be practicing in devotional service. But to know what bhakti is, we have to have an understanding. So that if we think logically about it, then there's a circle. To be a Mahatma, we have to have bhakti. To have bhakti, we need a Mahatma. It seems like a circle, but only if we think in logics. Only if we think in cause and effect. When we understand the relation between a Mahatma and practice of bhakti, in terms of love, in terms of feeling, in terms of experience of the heart, then we break that circle. We find our way in. And the way that we find our way then is by association. By associating, of course, with Guru 
but also by associating with other people who already feel this devotion in, in their hearts. And it's in this way that we can come through that paradox of understanding. Everyone, we ask often, how do I get greed, Gurudev? How do I get greed? And the answer is it is basically by having greed. You have to feel it to have it, and you have to have it to feel it. But if we let ourselves associate with people who have this, particularly with Guru, then we can find our way out of this paradox. So this is what a uh, Mahatma is, according to what Prabhupada to told us in his text. Um, it's a matter of a spiritual understanding, placing oneself in one's own divine nature, not a divine nature which is exterior to us, but in the one that we already have, that we have forgotten or don't have access to, have not found our way to. So we find ourselves in our own divine nature. And when we're attached with our own divine nature, we're connected with the divine nature of Krishna. Because we are part and parcel of Krishna. So when we find that place in ourselves, then we are with God. Every jiva, we know this from many places, but every jiva is, is <clears throat> situated between two times, types of energy, the, the internal energy of the spiritual, the svarup, and the external en uh, energy of the material. And so jivas are somewhere in between. We, uh, we normal souls are somewhere in between in what we call marginal energy or marginal potency. And we have a bit, we have one foot in the divine and one foot in the material. And our task is to move out of the material and into the divine part of our own selves. And we know, we learn every day from Gurudev and others that the way to do this is to be one-pointed, ekagraga, to be focused, to surrender to this devotional side of our personalities. That's how we become pure devotees. That's how we become Mahatma. Then we had chapter, sorry, um, verse 14. And verse 14 talked about the work we have to do, the work of devotion. And the, the kind of the work of devotion is that work of being one-pointed, the work of being constant, the work of establishing ourselves in a focused way towards the task of connecting with our, with our um, devotional side. And we looked, if you remember, we looked really closely at, um, at the verse because it was so, had so many very beautiful expressions in the Sanskrit. The first uh, line was satatam kirtayanatomam, always chanting me or my glories. And this word satatam meant wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whenever it is, night and day, sleeping and waking, we are singing in our minds or with our mouths, in our hearts, the song is never ending, the chanting is never ending, the chanting of the glories of, of Krishna. And this happens by physically chanting with our voices, but it's also by remembering the pastimes, because these pastimes are going on in our hearts as well, as in, as in the divine world, as well as in the divine, the transcendental world. The pastimes bring us devotional feeling because they're happening in our hearts. Everything in the pastime is an expression. Everything in our heart is an ex expression of the divine pastime. So when they mean something to us, these lilas that we're, we read and study and, and discuss, if they have a meaning to us, if they, have a, uh, if they carry us somewhere, it's because they're already touching a divine part in us. And then there was the, the other word I pointed out to you. I just liked it so much. I want to repeat it. It was this namasyantash or, or namashya, which means humbleness, respectfulness. But it was so beautiful because it's a combination of na and ma, not and me. 
So namasya means not meanness. So everything focusing on what is not me, in perfect humility, perfect surrender to what is not me, to the the the, the divine, is what brings us to this state of namasya. Uh, the last thing we talked about in that um, verse was rubber stamping. This was Prabhupada's words. He talked about when we're doing devotional practice, mm, we're aspiring to be to a higher devotional uh, spiritual level, but it's not enough to rubber stamp. It's not enough to make a copy of Krishna and think that we're living that copy. We cannot think about Krishna externally. We can't think about Krishna in his material form, which he has when he when he incarnates, when he appears. We must always meditate on Krishna in his spiritual form. Not the, the rubber stamping copy, but the form that's fed by energy, by the energy of Radharani, through loving relation, through personal relationships uh, with anyone but with Guru and with Krishna in particular. The impersonalist, uh, Prabhupada says, sees Krishna externally, sees Krishna in his material form. But we see Krishna in his eternal form, in his divine form. So through all the different activities of devotional service that we do, Every day, in the most simple way, the most, the most simple but dignified way, we become closer to our own spiritual self. We become more self-present. We become more purified in our service. We become pure, more pure in our mood, in our, in our emotion. Our emotion is not confused and, and broken and divided. And we become more pure in our service. All this through focusing one pointedly on the on the spiritual form of of Krishna. Today, then, we'll go on with verse fifteen. And verse fifteen is the beginning of a series of let's see, one, two, three, four, five verses that start to say all the positive things about what Krishna is. So lots of these last verses have told us what idiots think and what fools say and what we should not do and what the impersonalists are telling us. But this next sequence of verses are really very beautiful because they put right in front of us what Krishna must be. And of course, Krishna is everything, but the, the verse tries to describe what that everything looks like and tries to make it understandable for, for our minds, so that we can relate directly to it. So let's have a look. Um, there you have it. So the verse reads, others, so other practitioners, others who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge, worship the Supreme Lord as one without a second, diverse in many and in the universal form. I'll repeat it. Others who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge, worship the Supreme Lord as one without a second, Diverse in many and in the universal form. It's a complicated verse, but it has three parts that we'll look at together. Let's see what Prabhupada says. He says, this verse is the summary of the previous verses. The Lord tells Arjuna that those who are purely in Krishna consciousness and do not know anything other than Krishna are called Mahatma. So this verse 
is going to instruct us about how to cultivate authentic, pure knowledge of Krishna. We know that Krishna is all knowledge, Krishna is all things. Uh, so how can there be a need for knowing anything else? Prabhupada says, don't know anything else. Don't try to know anything else. There's only one thing to know, and that's, that's Krishna. And what it means is that all the activities of our lives, all the experiences we have, all the emotions we feel, these are all knowledge of Krishna. So we must not think of the word knowledge here as being book knowledge. It's not knowledge of facts. It's knowledge of experiences and truths of emotion and mood. All the experiences we have make up the knowledge of Krishna that we have. So the knowledge we have of all the service that we do, so making prasad, when we're when we're doing our service in, in to our family, to our to our to our husband, to our wife, to our lover, to our children, when we're when we're sewing a dress for the for the temple, uh, when we're building a space, when we're cleaning, all this knowledge that we use to do that, focused on service to, to Radha Mohan is the knowledge that Prabhupada is referring to. Everything you understand in your heart when you're doing service, and you understand many things, never think little of ourselves when we're doing service because the understanding is great in our actions. And everything we understand in those actions are already knowledge of God. Incomplete, sure, but still knowledge of God. So uh, Prabhupada says that Krishna says to Arjuna, do not know anything other than Krishna, and then you will be a Mahatma. So he's not saying, Prabhupada, he's not telling us, don't be stupid. He's not saying, be correct with the facts. He's not telling us to know nothing about how to drive a car or how to how to how to cook a cook, cook a cook a meal. But the wise among us know that the true knowledge of doing anything, when done in service to Radha Mohan, is knowledge of Radha Mohan, spiritual knowledge. Let's call that. Maybe we could even call it wisdom without going too far. Yeah. You remember Gurudev sometimes tells us that everything is in the Maha Mantra. All the universe is in the Maha Mantra. This is a bit of the same thing. When we're living our lives in pure service, then when we say Maha Mantra, we become everything. Prabhupada goes on then. Some of them, some, some devotees, some of them are already described as the distressed, the financially destitute, the inquisitive, the ones who are asking questions, and those who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge. Prabhupada's referring to the earlier verses. But, he says, there are others who are still lower. And these are divided into three. He who worships himself as one with the Supreme Lord, as being unified with the Supreme Lord. He who concocts some form of the Supreme Lord and worships that. So he invents or makes up some form of the Supreme Lord. And he who accepts the universal form, the Visvarupa of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and worships that. Prabhupada is telling us that um, 
those who are on the path to enlightenment have somehow felt the goal, the goal of knowing Radha Mohan. They've felt the emotion, the mood which draws them to that goal. And they've even sometimes begun to focus on moving towards that goal, full Krishna consciousness, full spiritual awareness of Radha Mohan. And that in some way this is there's only time which is required and, and, and effort to, to do that. But then Prabhupada describes three ways in which we fall short. Three ways that we are almost there, but somehow get it wrong. So he goes on and describes these in detail now. He says, out of the above three, the lowest, those who worship themselves as the Supreme Lord, thinking themselves to be monists, are most predominant. They are most common. So they think that since God is me and I am God. Everything about me is God. That simply by worshipping myself, I'm worshipping God. And Prabhupada continues, such people think themselves to be the Supreme Lord. And in this mentality, they worship themselves. This is also a type of God worship, where they can understand that they are not the material body, but are actually spiritual soul, at least such a sense is prominent. Generally, the impersonalists worship the Supreme Lord in this way. So an impersonalist devotee thinks, yes, God is everything, so I am God. So what's the problem? I can just worship myself. I can uh, make a cult out of myself. And in that way, I can worship God. So it's Already someone who knows that there is a soul, who recognizes his or her own svarup, but worships in an incorrect way. Gurudev asked if you can repeat that, uh, starting from the, such people think about themselves to be the Supreme Lord. Yes, I can. Such people think themselves to be the Supreme Lord. My God. I'm going to just having a little. Again, yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to find my. I'm struggling with my Zoom. Just one moment, please. No, then after you listen. I will. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Um... No problem. Um, so, what he means by this, he's referring to the impersonalists and others. And these these have already come a long way in their spiritual evolution because they have realized that they have a soul. This is, of course, the first step, Gopi Bhav, as we know. They realize they have a soul. But the impersonalists say that since God is in me and I am in God, then it's certainly just enough that I worship myself because I am God. There's just no difference between the creation of God and God himself. So I am God and I can just worship myself. This is the error of the impersonalists, says that it's just enough to focus on the godliness in oneself, and one focuses on God himself. 
that we are God. The error in this, Prabhupada doesn't describe it, but I can try to say it myself, the error in this is not understanding the emotional existence of a devotee. There's no loving relation with God. There's a knowledge relation of God. Reality is God. I am reality. I am God. There's no feeling there. There's no, there's no bhav. There's no devotion. So this conception of the imperialists, it misses completely the, the heart of bhakti. It misses completely the, the, the idea that prema is, Radha Mohan is prema. Radha Mohan is the expression of divine love. There's no room for loving devotion in this conception. That's the first class of error. And Prabhupada continues. He says the second class includes worshippers of the demigods. Those who, by imagination, consider any form to be the, support, the form of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> so these are the people who confuse the demigods with God. A bit by the same argument. God is everything. So the demigods are also gods. Then when they worship the demigods as God, they think they're worshiping God. Wow. The, the error is the same. Very positive. Okay. Yeah. The error is the same. It's that we don't understand that God is loving relation. We don't realize that it's through devotion and feeling that we reach God. It misses completely the very notion of prema as the heart of Radha Mohan and the loving relation as the heart of Radha Mohan. And this, from this point of starting point, bhakti is impossible. There is, no, there is no loving energy of Radharani present. There is no Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, experiencing love. There's just a frozen, frozen relation between God and demigod, a kind of equal sign between the two, and a kind of identity between the two. There's no movement, there's no feeling, there's no living, there's no life. Mm. Then there's a third class of um, what's that expression in Norwegian? Almost finished, Gopika. What is that? <laughs> a third class of devotees who almost made it. And he says the third class includes. I'm right there. The third class includes those who can cannot conceive of anything beyond the manifestation of the material universe. They consider the universe to be the supreme organism or entity, and they worship that. So the universe is a form of the Lord. This is what we in the West call pantheism. Pantheism, that means that we see God in nature. So the third class of mistake is thinking that all the material things around us are God, and only that is God. So in the flowers and the trees and the sky and, and all the material and our material bodies as well, uh, this is what God is. That God is in the uh, the uh, the external expansion only. The Krishna is in the external expansion only. This again misses the point uh, for the for the reason that there's no loving devotion possible. 
not only because there's no relation with God, but also because there are no living objects that are, are understood as God. God is just nature in this mistake, in this third class of things. So we worship the universe itself as kind of an object, as kind of a dead or non-living object, instead of having a relation with God, instead of having a, a, a devotional, loving relation with God. But of course, Prabhupada does not see that, say that, but what he means here is that, that Krishna sees himself in none of these forms. He doesn't, Radha Mohan is not to be found in these fixed and cold and one-on-one -on -one relations that either I am God or the demigods are God or nature is God. Huh? Krishna is to be found in the relation we have with Krishna, in the love we feel for Krishna, from Krishna, and this love is expanded into the love we feel for each other, for Guru, for, uh, for our children, for our, for our lovers, for our, for our families. <laughs> Wow. And now that's in these next four verses. This is what Krishna describes. He's going to say in, this, in these really very special verses, very poetic. This is what I am. Look now, here now. And it's very, very remarkable what he says he is. It's very beautiful to, to look at. And there's, there's, there's poetry in it in it everywhere. So let's have a look. So 16, 17, 18, 19. Hmm. Verse 16 says, It is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice the oh to the ancestors, the healing herb the transcendental chant, I am the butter and the fire and the offering. Yeah. So Krishna is all sides of all devotional practices. He's both the thing that is sacrificed, the butter. He is the fire that that makes the, gives the energy to the sacrifice, and he is the one to whom the sacrifice is made. So if you think of bhakti as a devotional relation between these three elements in any practice, there's an object, there's an action to take, and there's an action, there's God, then Krishna is all three of these things, wow. both the offering and the sacrifice, and the one who it's sacrificed to, all in one. It's a complete picture of our entire existence as devotees. We give of ourselves, we give something, and we give it to someone, to God. I am the butter, and the fire, and the offering. It's a, yeah. it's a complete con concept of God. And it's so beautifully concrete. There's no big theological words here. There's butter, there's fire. <laughs> the most simple things we have in our experience. <laughs> so then Prabhupada uh, comments. And you know, of, of course, this he says the sacrifice is known as Jyot Jostistoma. Uh, fire. The, you know, the fire sacrifice. And he says this sacrifice is also Krishna. And he is also the Mahajan, Mahajana. 
the oblation, the thing that's sacrificed, offered to the Peter Loka, to the, nature, the, the, the level of nature. Oh no, sorry, Peter is father. Uh, offered to the, the, the place of the father. Or the sacrifice performed to please the Peter, Peter Loka. Peter Loka. Considered as a kind of drug in the form of clarified butter. This too is Krishna. So both the ritual, the stoma, the act of devotion, the maha, maha, mahayagyan, mahayagyan, and the sphere or the father, the god to whom it is devoted, the pitraloka. All these things are Krishna. It's not that they're outside of Krishna and we do them for him. They're not that they're outside the religious experience and we do them for him. They're all part of him. And the degree to which we carry out these sacrifices, the butter sacrifice, we are also part and parcel of Krishna. Um, Prabhupada continues, the mantras chanted in this connection are also Krishna. And many other commodities made with milk products for offering in the sacrifices are also Krishna. The fire is also Krishna because fire is one of the five material elements and is therefore claimed as a separated energy of Krishna. In all these elements, in the milk, in the butter, in the ghee, in the fire, these are made possible, possible by energy. The energy of these elements, the butter, the fire, what is that energy? It's our sweet Radharani. <laughs> the energy of Radharani's love is what is energizing the sacrifice, giving meaning to that sacrifice. It's what gives energy to our bodies when we eat the butter, when we warm our bodies with the fire. This is the same energy that we receive from Radha, Radharani. And finally, Prabhupada says, in other words, the Vedic sacrifices recommended in the Karma Kanda division of the Vedas are in total also Krishna. Or, in other words, those who are engaged in rendering devotional service to Krishna are to be understood to have performed all the sacrifices recommended in the Vedas. Karma Kanda, this is the this is the division of um, tasks and labors that are done inside the, the ritual activities. But the, the point is that the totality of Radha Mohan's energy, which comes from, from Radharani, is contained in the actions of these rituals, not the rituals. That would be Vaidhi Bhakti. But in our loving act of carrying them out as devotees, we reach Raganuga, Rupanuga uh, Bhakti by carrying them out and by transferring this energy, the energy of the butter, the energy of the fire, to Radha Mohan. <laughs> <laughs> then we go to verse 17, which is very similar in its style, very poetic and very, very uh, paradoxical in a way, and, and very, very uh, moving. It says, I am the father of this universe. 
Pitaham Asya Yagato. Pitiham. I am the father. The mother, the support, and the grandsire. Again, I repeat. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. So I am Mohan, I am Radha, I am the thing that makes Radha Mohan come together. We could maybe even speculate and say Taitanya Mahaprabhu, the support, and the grandsire, and the, and the rest of the parampara. Is all these things in once. And already right in this verse, we have the loving relation of Radha Mohan. I am the father, I am the mother. I have the, I have the seed which I give to the mother who makes the universe, uh, who creates the universe. I am the father, I am the mother. I am Radha Mohan. The verse goes on. I am object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I'm also the Rig, the Sama, and the Yajna, the Vedas. Do you remember that there are four Vedas? The Rig, the Sama, the Yajna, and then there's one more, that, which is the Atarva. At Atarva. So I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. What is Om? Om is the original sound of spiritual energy. The first, the first sound of the creation of universe was spiritual energy in the form of Om. It's the energy of Radharani, this Om. When we evoke our Om at the beginning of a prayer, we're, we're bringing the energy from our hearts, from our souls, into our voices. It's the one it's the one word we humans can say which opens our mouth and our throat and our lungs all the way to our souls. When we say om, om, everything is open. It's a pure opening from the universe into our hearts. So om is that original release of spiritual energy, the spiritual energy of the Universe, spiritual. So Krishna, Radharani, Jivas, all that energy together is what we call upon when we say Om, Om, Om. It's the most open and softest sound we can imagine. So Prabhupada comments, the entire cosmic manifestations moving and unmoving, are manifested by different activities of Krishna's energy. That is to say, Radharani, the energy of divine love. So the expansions of Krishna, the material expansions, both moving and non-moving, we said it before, they come from the energy, the loving energy of Radharani. He continues, in the material existence, we create different relationships with different loving en entities who are nothing but Krishna's marginal energy, the jivas. <laughs> but under the creation of prakriti, nature, natural reality, some of them appear as our father, mother, grandfather, creator, etc. But actually, they all are parts and parcels of Krishna. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Oh. You are Kamal. You are surprising. Eh? What? Eh? Oh. Amazing. 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 <laughs> Where you learned it, my dear. I, I learned from <laughs> you, my dear. <laughs> Amazing from me, my dear. Wow. But would, uh, look what Prabhupada says here. It's it's amazing. He says, 
<laughs> he says, in the material existence, let's see, where are we? There we are, right here. In the material existence, we create different relationships. Relationships. And as we said before, by looking at the introduction of Prabhupada, there is no relationship which is not supported by love. If you see another human being, you see another soul. Otherwise, you just see a stone. Every time we see another human being, if it's a stranger or a lover or a friend, it's a spiritual relationship. So when Prabhupada says, in material existence, we create relationships, he means in material existence, we embody love. We embody love between souls. Love, as he says, with different living energies. Loving energy. In material existence, we have Radharani's loving energy. It's in a marginal form in our, in our lives as ordinary jivas, but it's there. It's what powers our love for others. It's what powers our love for between human beings. It's what powers our love for other things too. Beautiful, beauty, beautiful objects, lovely meals, beautiful pictures, lovely sounds. This is also loving energy in a lower form, but it's still loving energy. It's, a, it's the second cousin to the love we have for other human beings. That's what a living entity is. It's someone who has Radharani's energy in him or her. And Prabhupada continues here, as such, these living entities who appear to be our father, our mother, etc., are nothing but Krishna. Imagine that. Your mother, nothing but Krishna. Your father, your wife, your lover, your friend, they're Krishna. They're nothing but Krishna, he says. In this verse, the word data, let's see where it is. Yeah, here in the data there, data pitamaha, it means creator. But I think maybe, Jainanda, you can help me. I think data also means nurse or a nurse uh, yeah nurse or feminine at least feminine energy is that true am i right about that one data so so guru dev is saying like uh guru dev is saying data means giving giving yes the, 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 Yes. Prema Data. Does it, is it a feminine is it a feminine is it a feminine energy? Yeah, yeah. Giving. Hmm. To give. Hmm. Okay. Giving energy is Radha's giving. Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> So Prabhupada is saying, I go on, um, in this verse, the word data means creator. The creation, Gurudev is saying, in the terms of giving that energy, giving the energy and its loving energy. So not only our father and mother parts, oops, I'm sorry, not only are our father and mother parts and parcels of Krishna, but their creator, grandmother, grandfather, are also Krishna. Then Prabhupada continues, um, actually, there it is, actually, any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. Any loving entity, any living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. All the Vedas, therefore, aim only toward Krishna. Whatever we want, we want to know through the Vedas is but a progressive step to understanding 
Krishna. This also means that everyone, include and also the Vedas, are containing this energy, this loving energy, this devotional energy, the loving energy of data, of the gift of creation. Creation as giving. So it's not creation as, a, as an explosion from nothing, like the Big Bang. It's creation understood as a nurturing, loving, giving of existence. Existence is given. In German language, I don't know if there are any Germans in the room there. Yes. Yeah. In German, of course, you know, es gibt means it is or there is. And es gibt literally means it gives. So the German example shows us that existence itself is data. Existence itself is giving of the energy. Wow. Again, again. <laughs> wow. Very, very deep. I never thought about this. You give us so many new enlightenments today. My you, need, you, need, you need to be a foreigner to discover your own language, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Hmm. Oh, Surprise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> In, in German, when we say it is or there is, we say es gibt, which means it gives. So somehow existence itself is yeah. a giving, a data, creation as a generosity. As, some, as something behind existence which gives existence in an energetic, generous, loving uh, way. Wow. Hmm. So Jesus also the father. Hmm. Yeah. So the question is for the Germans is, what is the S? What is the it that gives? Es gibt. Who is, who is doing that giving? It's Krishna. So Prabhupada continues then. He says, the subject matter... Mm, there we are. That subject matter which helps us purify our constitutional position wow. is especially Krishna. So what we do, reading and sharing with Gurudev, meditating our own, chanting, temple practice, all these things we do in order to purify ourselves, to, to reach our constitutional position, our swarup, oh, wow. are also Krishna. My God! Mm. <laughs> Do these things with joy, <laughs> my brothers and sisters. <laughs> they are Krishna. When you are coming. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if Gurudev was jumping, if he could. <laughs> oh Please come soon. Yes, I'm coming soon. I have to marry my daughter first, and then I'm coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, then Prabhupada goes on mm, here, similarly. Similarly, he says, the living entity who is inquisitive to understand, who's curious, all Vedic principles, is also part and parcel of Krishna. And as such, is also Krishna. So anybody 
that you meet on the street of, of your hometown who has one little drop of curiosity, has one little question to ask you about devotional service, about bhakti. The smallest, stupidest question. Why do you have 108 beads or something? The most insignificant question. This person is also Krishna. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And Prabhupada goes on in all the Vedic mantras, the word Om, called pra Pranava, which just means a Om, it's a word for Om, is a transcendental sound vibration, and this is also Krishna. And because in all the hymns of the four Vedas, Sama, Yaju, Rag, Rig, and At Atarva, the Pranava or Umkara, the Om syllable, the Om letter, the Om sound, is very prominent since it's there everywhere in the Vedas. Then the Vedas are also Krishna. And uh, Udabji, I think that Pranava also means life giving, which is ah. coming from this big this pranava, this name of the syllable on is also meaning life giving. That is which is beautiful. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, we take one more, we take one more verse now. Eighteen. And here uh, Bhagavad Gita says. I am the goal. The Giti, I think the Giti, uh, Gati, yeah, Gati, Gati. I am the goal. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. So beautiful. So beautiful. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. Wow. So not only is Krishna the goal, Radha Mohan is the goal, loving relation is the goal, but Krishna is the sustainer, the one who makes going to the goal possible. The one who's not only the thing we want to obtain, the loving relation, but the energy that will carry us to that loving relation. Krishna is both. Radha Mohan is both of these things. The energy of sustaining is in the energy of Radharani, and Radha Mohan is the goal. He's the master, the commander of, of all activities in the universe. But he's also the witness, the one who sees, sees us as jivas making our way along our path to the goal. He watches us. He validates us. He sees us. And as he's the abode, he's the home, the constitutional position. The sarup. He's the refuge. He's the place we can go when we are in trouble, when we're having difficulties with our practice. And the most dear friend. The verse continues, I'm the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place and the eternal seed. So we have this Vishnu, Mahavishnu energy, the creation, annihilation. And then we have this resting place, the earth, the eternal seed. So the resting place, I suppose we could call feminine energy and the eternal seed, the masculine energy. And it's a place to be, Krishna is, a place to feel safe, a place where things can grow and develop, and a place where we can have relations to others. 
loving relations, devotional relations to others, relations to others and the relation, a loving relationship to ourselves. And this is a wonderful verse to remember because what is a God sister? Look around you, you lucky ones who are together with your God sisters and God brothers. What is a God sister and a God brother? Well, it's it's someone who loves you as part of Radha Mohan, as being part of this nurturing, as part of this sustaining, witnessing refuge on your path to to your to your to Radha Mohan. That is what a God sister, or God brother is. It's someone who's there with you, who's doing the same thing, who has the same experience, who is also Krishna. So, Prabhupada then says, Gati, yeah, Gati is the goal. Gati means the destination where we want to go. But the ultimate goal is Krishna, although people do not know it. One who does not know Krishna is misled. And his so called progressive march is either partial or hallucinatory. This is very interesting. First, the progressive march, this is our devotional path, our path towards purification, our, our path towards spiritual enlightenment. And the one who is misled, who doesn't know Krishna, is only doing it partially or is doing it hallucinatory, in a dream or falsely. But here we need to ask, as we ask so often, what does it mean to know Krishna? Again, it's not the knowledge of the facts about Krishna. It's not knowledge from the books. To know Krishna is to know Krishna's heart, to know Krishna's soul, his internal energy, his internal potency. So in order to go correctly on our path, we need to know Krishna, and we can only yeah. learn to know by sharing, by the guidance of our, of our Guru and by others. Only this way can we know the spiritual identity of Krishna and learn about our own spiritual identity. Only that way can we go along the path of uh, devotional practice. Wow. So we have to be in the mood. We have to have the bhav, the, the loving mood the mood of service and and this for this we need our gurudev and we need our brothers god brothers and sisters yeah. so we must be in the loving mood we have to feel the poetry of the prayers we say hear the music that we're chanting uh, smell the incense in the temple taste the delicious prasad which has been offered to radha mohan and see the love in the eyes of our children, see the love in our, the eyes of our husband or our lover or our god brothers and god sisters. That's where we find that loving energy which will carry us to, to would carry us on our path to Radha Mohan. And then we know Krishna, then we know God, then we know what's the reality of Krishna, which is Radha Mohan, that union. That the Radha Mohan is a loving relation. If God is anything, it's a loving relation. The Yugala Kishore. And then we know the goal. Then we know the Gati. Then we can move. Gurudev says always, I'm the navigator. But he can only navigate us if we love him. And he can only navigate us if he loves us. Navigating like he's sending us to the bakery to get us to buy some bread, 100 meters down the street to the right, and then first door on your left. This is not navigation from Gurudev. Navigation from Gurudev is with loving heart. It's navigating with love. It's letting our soul carry us and help us along the path. A path which is, as Gurudev often says, when we're reading with Maharaj, uh, Jainanda Maharaj, a hidden one. 
when we're reading the hidden path of devotion, we see how deeply that path is hidden. So Guru is the guide. When we love Guru, we see Guru everywhere. Just like as we read in Velapakusmanjari, Radharani sees Krishna everywhere in the Raj forest. Everywhere she looks, he's there. It's just the same for us. Everywhere we look, we see in the eyes of strangers our own Gurudev. And when we do that, we see our navigator. We see it in the souls of the people we love. We see the love of Guru. And in the love of Guru is the path, path, pathfinder, the navigator, which takes us on our takes us on our way. Or to put it in a different way, when one first, when we first have love, then everyone is a lover. When we first have love, everything is loving. So Prabhupada goes on. There are many who make as their destination different demigods. And by rigid performance of the strict respective methods, they reach different planets known as Chandra Loka, Surya Loka, Indra Loka, Mahaloka, etc. But all such lokas or planets or spheres of reality, being cre creations of Krishna, are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. They're Krishna because Krishna has created them, but they're not Krishna because the path we are taking to go to them are done by Vaidhi practice, by rigid performance of strict res respective methods. And they're not done through uh, Raghunuga, Rupanuga, Bhakti, not through devotional loving practice. This is the path to the, to the loka, to the planets, by GPS navigator and not by bhakti navigator. This is the path, say five shastras, wave the incense four times, turn around once, and then you're okay. This is the Vaidhi method to getting there, and we won't get there. We won't approach Krishna fully if we do it that way. Yeah. Again, repeat this. Which, how much? Um, Prabhupada says, there are many who make as their destination different demigods. They're going to, the, the goal is demigods. And by rigid performance of the strict respective methods, they reach different planets known as Chandra Loka, Surya Loka, Indra Loka, Mahar Loka, etc. But all such lokas, Prabhupada says, or planets, being creations of Krishna, are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. And so I commented that since they're the creations of Krishna, they are Krishna. But since we were trying to reach them by regulative methods, by rigid performance of strict methods, vaidhi bhakti practices, then we, the, we are not reaching there and they are not entirely Krishna. So they're simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna, says Prabhupada. Yeah, Prabhupada. Uh, he goes on to say, actually, such planets, being the manifestations of Krishna's energy, are also Krishna. But actually, they only serve as a step forward for realization of Krishna. To approach the different energies of Krishna is to approach Krishna indirectly. So it's not enough to understand the universe of planets, the loka, the sum of all things in the universe, the sum of all facts, the sum of all objects in the universe 
every single one, if we brought them all together, together, that would not make up Krishna. Krishna is that and more. Krishna is all the things in the universe plus the soul of all the things in the universe. So in order to understand the creation, we need to understand it as spiritual form, not only material form. If you had a very long life, you could probably, a very, very long life, maybe you could go and meet every person in the world. How many are there? Seven billion. But unless you saw every person as a soul, as a jiva, unless you saw Krishna living in them, you would understand nothing about the world. Nothing at all. Prabhupada goes on here, one should directly approach Krishna. Well, that will take uh, save time and energy. For example, <laughs> if they're, well, for example, if there is a possibility of going to the top of the building by the help of an elevator, why should one go by staircase, step by step? And this is what the Gurudev is saying when he Talks about going around your head to get to your to to get to your svarup. There's a direct way and there's an indirect way and there's a long way and a short way and a difficult way and an easy way. How to go directly to Krishna is by developing the love in our hearts. That's the hidden path. That's the shortest path. That's the direct path in case, in, in a way, because when we do that, then we've already arrived in a certain sense. Krishna says, sorry, um, uh, Prabhupada says, everything there, everything is resting on Krishna's energy. What is Krishna's yeah. energy? Yeah. How surprising to us. <laughs> Therefore, Prabhupada says, without Krishna's, uh, sorry, without Krishna's shelter, nothing can exist. That says everything, right there. Everything is resting on Krishna's energy, Radharani. So mm -hmm. if we don't take shelter, we won't find Radharani's energy. Yeah. Krishna is the supreme Krishna is the supreme ruler because everything belongs to him and everything exists on his energy. Surprising. Surprising. I agree. I never listen to this thing. Where you was so long time in the scorn of Gaudiya. Uh, many lives, many lives wasted before I came to you, Guru. <laughs> <laughs> or how maybe, years, maybe not wasted. Maybe I needed them. How many years you practice devotional practice? Eight, eight. I mean, I met you in Oslo eight years ago. My God. Wow. Also, you see me first time. Yeah, that was first time at Kopika and Kopinath. May they be blessed. <laughs> Just come over for a little cup of coffee, Gopika said. <laughs> 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 My God. Hmm. Okay, we finish here, then we'll be done. Okay, so, oh. Prabhupada, let's see. Oh, there is uh, more time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to listen to you. Please, my dear, it's more expanded.
Um, huh? No, I'm lost. Just like here we are. Krishna. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Maharaj. Ah, come in, Krishna. I'm trying to find my place. Everything is just on Krishna. Krishna, supreme ruler. Because it belongs to Krishna. There we are. Excuse me. Krishna being situated in everyone's heart is the supreme witness. So the verse wow. said that Krishna is also witness. How witness. does Krishna... In the verse it said Krishna is witness. My God. It said I'm the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. My God. But how is Krishna the witness, we can ask? Well, it's because he's situated in everyone's heart. Wow. Krishna being situated in everyone's heart is the supreme witness. Wow. So Krishna is not sitting up on a planet looking down on us from the outside. He's sitting in our hearts and looking into us from the inside. My God. He's the witness to, to our love. When he's witnessing, he's not witnessing the, the logics we're thinking in our minds. He's witnessing what our hearts are doing. He's witnessing our feelings and our love and our emotion and our attachment to Radharani. And Prabhupada goes on, the residences, countries or planets on which we live are also Krishna. So all the places, all the abodes, so abode is the word we used in the translation. All the abodes are also Krishna. Krishna is the ultimate goal of shelter. And as such, one should take shelter of Krishna, either for protection or for annihilation of his distress condition. So Krishna is also nurturing, mothering, uh, protecting us, sheltering us when, we, when we're distressed. And Prabhupada continues, Whenever we, have, whenever we have to take protection, we should know that our protection must be a living force. This means the protection must be a loving force, an energy which is alive, not one which is just a blockade or a wall or a, or a safe box where we can hide. Protection comes in the form of loving force, loving protection. The, the only protection we need is love. We don't need guns and walls and, and, and glass uh, windows. We need love to protect us. This is the living force that, that Tadada Mohan gives to us. Our shelter is prema. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, to sing to Bhagavad Gita. It's there, like Vrindavan. My God. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. Mm. I am surprised. I have to learn more from you. <laughs> it surprised me, yes. Nebahad. Huh? Nebahad. Yeah, such a rush coming you are so rasga. Mm. My God, your displeasure is preserved like anything else. Mm. You have to record and keep it here. Make the file of this. Yes, I do. I do. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, Prabhupada then says, Thus, Krishna. Oop, wrong one. Wrong one. Let's see. 
Uh, thus, Krishna is the supreme living entity, which means for us, thus, Radha Mohan is the supreme loving entity. Well. Living is loving. Thus, Krishna is the supreme loving entity, I say. Yeah. But Prabhupada continues, since Krishna is the source of our generation, or the supreme father, no one can be a better friend than Krishna, nor can anyone be a better well-wisher. He's, again, he's commenting the, the last part of the verse, where it says that Krishna is our best friend. And of course, who can be a friend? Only someone who loves us, whose relation to us is one of, of love and not just of management. Counting how many rounds we've done or how many shastras we've re re uh, read or how many, how many um, prayers we've said. It's someone who loves us in our hearts, in our souls, as a living, loving entity. Yeah. And fi finally, Prabhupada says, Krishna is the original source of creation and the ultimate rest after annihilation. Krishna is therefore eternal, eternal cause of all causes. That's the, the end of the commentary of the of the verse eighteen. Would anyone like to share? Half an hour you have a time. <laughs> More you <laughs> This is my request to you. Okay. <laughs> if the magician in once more, once more, they also do. Okay. So, and I that you have to do this way. We so, need to listen to you more and more. Okay. Please. Very good. I do gladly my what you request. Then we go to verse 19. <laughs> Um, and it's the final verse of Krishna telling Arjuna who he is, and in this very, always very paradoxical way, who he is, what, what, uh, what his existence means. He says, "O oh, Arjuna." I control heat, the rain, and the drought. I am immortality, and I am also death personified, both being and non-being are in me. So this is very powerful verse. O oh, Arjuna, I control heat, the rain, and the drought. So all the sides of material experience are in Krishna. I am immortality. Mind you, he doesn't say I am immortal, although he is says, I am immortality, means I am the experience of being immortal. I am the experience of pure life. I am the experience of life without end. It is my pleasure, it is my experience to have created this universe where there is immortality for souls. I am the one who is I'm the one who knows what this is, what immortality means, what it means that a soul lives forever, that a body comes and goes, but a soul lives forever. 
I am the one who lives this and understands this. And the verse says, I am also Beth personified. So by the same, uh, the same way he understands what death is. Both being and non-being are in me. Now, if you understand that sentence, then you are very, very good. This is the biggest contradiction we could imagine. It's the biggest contradic con contradiction in history to be a being and non-being at the same time. But Krishna is both of these. That is to have a form of existence and to understand what that existence means and to also understand what it would mean to not exist. We certainly don't understand these two things, we jivas. But this is where Krishna is. This is what he understands, experiences. Someone who experiences non-being is someone very special indeed. So let's see what Prabhupada says. Krishna, by his different energies, diffuses heat and light through the agency of electricity and the sun. Again, by his different energies, diffuses heat and light. In other words, the energies of God, which are creating material energy, like heat and light, are immaterial energies. Prema being the first and foremost one. So spiritual energy, uh, immaterial energy, becomes uh, expanded in the material world into heat and light, electricity, and the heat of the sun. Wow! Really? <laughs> Energy. Mm. Oh. Every energy is coming from higher. Mm. Wow. During summer season, Prabhupada says, it is Krishna who checks rain from falling from the sky, and then during the rainy season, he gives unceasing torrents of rain. Wow. Mm -hmm. The energy which sustains us by prolonging the duration of our life is Krishna. Radharani's energy is Krishna. And Krishna meets us at the end as death. This is um, Prabhupada explaining when the, the verse says, I am life and I am death. Even the experience of death even the experience of death is an experience of Krishna. Wow. It's difficult to understand. When we meet death, we meet Krishna. When we meet death, we meet an understanding of what life has been and what life without a material body will be. We understand what's, we understand completely what the internal energy, the marginal energy, and the external energy mean, and where we are situated in, in those three kinds of energy. So we understand what death is. We understand what death takes us to, and the way it's enveloped by, by Krishna, the way that Krishna is death. Prabhupada says, by analyzing, by analyzing all these different energies of Krishna, one can ascertain that for Krishna, there is no distinction between matter and spirit. Or in other words, he is both matter and spirit. 
I think we've discussed this idea in the words of the experience of Siddha Deya and Sadhika Deya, that when we achieve spiritual enlightenment, when we purify our souls, and we reach a full experience of spiritual world, it is not, as you might imagine in a Christian framework, it's not that we hop from one to the other, or we open a door and pass from one room to another, the material room to the spiritual room. No, it's when the difference between our material form and our spiritual form becomes nothing. It disappears. So Krishna is the state in which there is no difference between material and spiritual. The material is spiritual. The spiritual is material. That this opposition, this two-sided experience becomes one, becomes one unified experience. So being Krishna is having that experience that there's no difference. That spirit is everywhere, everywhere in matter, and matter is everywhere spiritual. And it's only, what's even more important for us, um, is, that, is that this verse is, of course, about energy. And this discovery of the relation between material material energy and spiritual energy comes in this in this verse about divine energy so the analysis we see, analysis of matter and spirit here is about energy it's about the energy of radharani which is what carries us from the one to the other it's what links the material experience with the spiritual experience it what gives us an insight in into the spiritual from our material positions. Why do we why do we have faith in our spiritual identity? Because we feel it in our hearts. We feel Aradhani, Radharani's loving energy in our hearts. And this is the signpost. This is the hint. This is the this is the reassurance, if you like that there is a spiritual identity that waits for us, that there's a spiritual identity that we already have. So all this verse is about energy. All this verse is Radharani. 919 is Radharani's verse. The common ground between all existing things and all existing souls is Radharani's energy, the common ground between the material and the spiritual. So now just let me read, now having said that, let me read the verse again and we listen to it with fresh ears. O Arjuna, I control heat, the rain, the drought, I am immortality, and I am also death personified. Both being and non-being are in me. These are all forms of Radha Mohan's energy. Heat, rain, drought, immortality, mortality, being and non-being. These are all forms of energy. So all guided, governed by Radharani's loving energy. Verse 19 is Radharani's verse. Then we finish the, the commentary here. Um, in the advanced stage of Krishna consciousness, one does not therefore make such distinctions. Prabhupada means distinction between material and spiritual. It's not that we go through the door from the material room to the, the spiritual room. It's that we don't even see the difference anymore. The pure 
consciousness, the Krishna Karshan consciousness, does not experience the distinction between spiritual and material. He sees Krishna only in everything. Just like when we are pure devotees, we see Guru in everyone. Finally, Prabhupada says, since Krishna is both matter and spirit, the gigantic universal form comprising all material manifestations is also Krishna. Matter and spirit, the universal form, is also Krishna. And his pastimes in Vrindavana as two-handed Shyamasundara playing on a flute are those of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes. It's really, it's an absolutely wonderful verse and the commentary is brilliant as well. Just, just really beautiful. Can I ask a question? I'd rather you give answer, but okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, I will return you to the previous one, text 18. Okay. Because I think it's important uh, to clarify the second line, line of purpose. It's written here the ultimate goal is Krishna. Can you clarify it? Because we heard so many times from our sugar that the ultimate goal is not. I think I would ask uh, Guru Dev to clarify. <laughs> you are right, this is a very, very important matter. <laughs> yeah. Krishna stand, stand, you see, you will get it. Hmm. Yes, and slowly, the guy. No, it should not shine it. Hmm. And this person is Krishna. <laughs> sign it, Prabhupada cleared this culture. Who not sign it, they have a goal, Krishna. Who sign it, then slowly and progressively they will reach the ultimate goal. Prabhupada line, I think. Big time. Uh, can we also can I add to this? Uh, what, what does it mean to take shelter of Krishna? Shelter of Krishna. Without signing is no shelter. Assignment is taking shelter of Krishna. Then he is cut and open that we can enter to be in Kunja. Before only I am traveling outside the world to search Krishna. The moment I sign Krishna, they are done. He said, not I am alternate goal, ultimate goal. I am not an ultimate goal. Slow and steady, you will be to ultimate goal. Or to my one point. Yeah, well, take that. Sri Radha, Prabhupada works. But we not sign it, so we are blocked in. We the ten ten for everyone. Mm. Loudly, not your English is very up and down. 
The no, no. ultimate goal of progress is Krishna. People do, do not know this. Where is from the salvation of the devotees? And bona fide spiritual master are important. One should know what the goal is Krishna. And then the goal is a sign, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed. And the ultimate goal is achieved. <laughs> <laughs> Still doubt is coming. It's not achieved. Don't find it. Right, Uda? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. You read and explain this. Uda, how yes. has to listen? The 10 10. 10 10. Not my word. Bhagavad Gita, you don't need to add one word. This is the beauty attitude. We love to some mind you may need to add one word. Understand the meaning of the word. To those who are constantly devoted to me, to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So if first we have a Look, sorry. With the way they will come to me, I will give understanding. Go on. Yeah. And the purport says in this verse, the word buddhi yogam is very significant. We may remember that in the second. Buddhi. Hmm? Buddhi yoga in Buddhi means intelligent. We are more not buddhi. It means the linking together through understanding. Buddhi yoga. Uh, hmm. Buddhi Buddhi means the mind is not pure. Hmm. Not understand. Not understand. The mind. Yeah. Mind is when the become pure. You read one word, you will understand. Hmm. This is the purity of mind. Honestly, in eight years, you never practice Bhagavad Gita. I know this. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe you six months you practice Bhagavad Gita. Or one year. You start reading Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And I think you will explain. I feel that I cannot explain that you explain. I never explain like this. I never see like this. But you got the vision. Well, it feels like you explained it to me, Gurudev. I'm just repeating, but it just comes out like this, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> you are connected with me. That is a pretty truth. Mm. You are connected with divine energy. Mm. But actually, it surprised to me mm. what you are talking about. This is Buddha. We may remember that in the second chapter, the Lord instructing Arjuna said, 
that he had spoken to him of many things and that he would instruct him in the way of Bhuti Yoga. Now, Bhuti Yoga is explained. Bhuti Yoga itself is action in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, oh, this is Bhuti Yoga. <laughs> That is the highest intelligence. Because Krishna consciousness is Radha consciousness. This mercy happened to you by the mercy of Radha. Hmm. Krishna consciousness is Radha. Understanding clear. Hmm. Because see, by love, we understand it. Mm. That is the meaning of Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Only Radha is Krishna consciousness. No one can be conscious like Radha. And who took the shelter of Radhika, he also becomes conscious. Mm. It would be a yeah. Mm. Well, it like this that this inspiration that of course we first have to assign to Krishna because only then Radhika is happy and then she will reveal the yeah. But Prabhupada can see Krishna consciousness only Radha is yours. Do you will first assign it? Yes, you will not doubt put to that because you want to be Radha consciousness, that is your goal. So, you will sign it, you will close this file. Go further, you will have a higher desire. Because this Krishna concept is rather interesting. So, Guru Dev, can I say? Mm -hmm. <coughs> this, uh, this, this Krishna consciousness, who is Krishna consciousness? Actually, who is Krishna consciousness? Is, is, is Radha's consciousness. And then, someone who takes shelter of Radha, that is also Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. That is Radha Dash. Ah. Actually, Radha is real Krishna consciousness in that sense. So today I understand that yoga is actually loving and care. That is in Radha Das. So today I could learn from Guru Dev and Uttamaji, or actually Bhutti yoga is self action in Krishna consciousness. That's my understanding. This is also Radha Das. Yeah, oh. this is the mercy of Radha Charan Maharaj. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, you want to open this back. Ideally, you want to open the back. Yes. But the real back. Yeah. <coughs> Anyone else for sharing? You make two minutes to see. Huh? <laughs> Easy like to see now. <laughs> It's possible to explain the way it is today. Krishna is saying, I'm the father, I'm the mother, I'm the sustainer. Sustainer, sustainer. 
This, yes, it's a uh, verse 17. I am a father of the New York's demands. Ah, that's support. support. And could you explain uh, more Radha, Madhya means Radha, Madhya means uh, Mohan, and support is Sanjay. Wow. 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 I think Russian somebody hiding man. This is Russian quality. Wow. Hmm. Oh Again God. then. Oh my god. But you slow say. Because English is not your tongue. So when you say in Russian, then it becomes one. That's the understanding of uh, is this uh, text 17 from 9th chapter? It's written here. Krishna is telling, I am the father of the universe. The mother, the support, and our ontology is explained as meaning Moha is the father, and mother is Shimati Radhika. And he explains the support means Chitani Mahaprabhu. But we know Chitanya Mahaprabhu coming also to learn uh, the art how Manjari served the Shimatradika, big one point. And this also means the support means who support the Pradak more and still as Manjari. Wow. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Today I could not. Can I say it? <laughs> today Uttama is very sweetly, very lovingly explain everything. I I I learn many things today. Actually, every day, um, but today especially very sweet and very nice, especially nice things. Hmm. You, you say, Guru Dev is a navigator, but not like a GBC navigator. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but actually, love navigator. So, if we love Guru Dev, then we could see every Oya Guru Dev's presence. <laughs> Before I could not understand why Prabhupada said, Oh, my Guru Dev sent my disciple. But uh, now I slowly, slowly, I could understand. Actually, Guru Dev is manifesting. Guru Dev is everywhere. Because Radha, love is everywhere. Love is everywhere. So means servant of love is everywhere. So therefore, Everything Guru Dev you know, give us, even devotees protecting us, devotees associated sometimes chastisement also protecting us, correction also protecting us. I understood. Guru Dev said 24-7. So how to remember how to do 27? Today I love, if we love Guru Dev, if we love Radha Moha, then we could see every other Guru Dev and Radha. Then we cannot escape. We want to escape, but we cannot escape. <laughs> So we, we, we have to do 24 seven. So love makes us 24 seven. Mm. 
In uh, October 17. October 17. Wow. Mm. Very happy. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah.